So if you wouldn't be invested right now in the 60-40 portfolio, and I think I agree with you that, that, I mean, that's a very traditional way of investing. How would you be allocating capital right now? If you were sitting on a pile of capital today and you had to allocate it, what, what kind of capital alloc allocation would you follow? I would buy short-term U.S. treasuries and wait. Short-term U.S. treasuries being two-year U.S. treasuries? Probably, uh, you know, zero to one-year treasuries. Yes, zero to one year treasuries and, and, get yourself, and get yourself three percent, whatever, whatever the rate yeah. is, three percent, three and a half percent, whatever the rate is. So, you'd be sitting in cash earning three to four percent. What would be your trigger point to start deploying? The Fed's going to tell us there's going to be we're, we're going to there's going to be some event, right? So, March 2020, what was it? It was a corporate bond market froze, right? And our market broke next morning, Fed emergency meeting. Oh. We're bailing out the entire corporate bond market. There'll be something similar, similar to how the guilt, the UK guilt market, right? It's just three days. It took three days. Yields rose on 100 basis points in the 30 year and in, in, in the UK. It only took three, three trading days. And the BOA said, oh, no, we're not selling any more bonds. Oh, yes, we have 65 billion pounds we're going to buy over 13 weeks. Um, completely scratched everything, right? So we're going to have an event like that. And it's going to be entirely obvious. And then risk is going to go like that. And then you get hit back on the bus. So what you think is the best trade before that is to accumulate as much cash as you possibly can, sit on the cash, make sure that you've got access to the cash, earn whatever interest rate you get, whether it's one, two, three, four, five percent, earn that interest, and then just wait for the market to break. And when the market yeah. breaks, you'll know on the day that the market's breaking, that the market's breaking, and that, you know, just wait for the announcement of the Fed meeting or the emergency meeting, and then deploy all your capital just before that. Or after it doesn't, you don't need to try to time it, right? You know, it, did you did you need to be, you know, was it March twenty third, whatever the date was, when the Fed, you know, bailed out the corporate bond market? Did you need to bottom tick the S and P and the Nasdaq one hundred? No, let them tell you about all the new fancy acronyms they're going to roll out to print money, and then you just start. What, what did the? I forgot who said it. It was some J P Morgan senior exec. He said the reason why you buy corporate bonds right now is because you're co investing with the Fed. Co invest with the Fed. Buy what they're going to buy. Uh, and if they're buying a particular type of bond, you buy that. If they're buying a particular, if they're buying ETFs now, you buy that. It's just like in J Japan, right? The BOJ buys Nikkei ETFs, you buy Nikkei ETFs, right? Don't don't confuse it. And then obviously there's a crypto angle, but if you're just saying in a traditional non-crypto sphere, that, that's how I would approach it. How bullish are you on Bitcoin relative to your bullishness on Ethereum? Which one are you more bullish on? Um, I'm more bullish in the short term on Ethereum just from a structural point of view of uh, the removal of the like 13,000 ETH a day of issuance um, post submerge. But in terms of a philosophical stance, I think Ethereum is setting itself up for root awakening probably at the middle of the end of the next bull cycle. And that's when we'll sort of <clears throat> understand the value of the centralization if the current situation uh, with how the proof of stake and the validators have sort of set themselves up doesn't really resolve itself. And it's too early to tell whether it's, it's going to or not. So before we actually go on to it, let's just, I just want to conclude the Bitcoin part. Uh, in terms of buying Bitcoin, would you be buying Bitcoin now? Because you said initially that you'd be putting your money into cash and sitting in cash at, the, at zero rates or whatever the rates are at the, at the current short-term rate. Um, would you be buying, would you, would you start buying Bitcoin now? And I think what I'm alluding to is, do you think that there is long-term value in Bitcoin? And do you think that we're close enough to the bottom to actually be buying it? So I think if you, so I, have, I already own Bitcoin. I already own Bitcoin and now it's like, do I want more? And I would say, I'm going to wait because I'm going to trade it a bit. I, I think there's going to be an event and the Fed's going to tell us when, okay, the dollar liquidity situation is going to reverse and then it'll make a lot of sense. Now, does that mean that Bitcoin hasn't pre-traded that and maybe it's 25,000 and it's not 20,000? Maybe, but I'm okay. I'm already, I'm already invested. So I don't care. Like, okay, I missed out on, uh, on, a, bit of, on a bit of upside whatever. I'm, I'm still participating anyways in my portfolio. If you don't have Bitcoin and, you know, sort of these non US dollar liquidity arguments resonate with you about worrying about whether or not you're going to have access to your wealth or you, or the ways in which you're going to be able to safeguard your wealth against inflation or financial repression are going to be heavily constricted and in, in the very near future, then the time was yesterday. Just buy something. Get in as soon as possible. The price Get doesn't in. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the price is because when you need it, you won't be able to buy it. And so then it's irrelevant with the prices. And so I think that's sort of the situation where people should, you know, take a look at um, where they are. How, how do you separate huge conviction in this space 
huge conviction around the value of Bitcoin um, and having patience not to pull the trigger in buying. Like on the one hand, it takes a lot of discipline to sit on cash earning 4% when you're so excited about what's happening in this industry. Like, uh, so I know that you're excited about what's happening in the industry. How do you reconcile that? How do you have that patience to not do anything and sit in cash and just wait for the Fed? Um, I think it's just I haven't been investing my own money for, for a while, right? I've, I've done the I, I lost a lot of money in gold. Oh my God, the Fed's going to go bankrupt. The, you know, this money printing thing after the global financial crisis this is all really fucked up. And, you know, went really long gold at the top, right? Because I didn't everything's nuanced there's no nothing goes up or down in a straight line uh and so if you it pays to have a little bit more of a nuanced approach to things so that you get a better price at the end of the day this crypto shorts video is proudly brought to you by unis gaming the leading web3 gaming ecosystem not only a worldwide gaming community, Unix is a launchpad, a gaming studio, and a tech and content creator that serves as a bridge between Web 2 and Web 3.